It was the biggest woman's role, women, woman's role ever done by the BBC at that time. And it was, I played this woman, Nancy Astor, who was the first woman member of parliament in England, married to an extremely wealthy Anglo-American called Waldorf Astor. And um, she was the first woman member of parliament. And I played her from 17 to 73. And so uh, it was huge. But the, and, and I loved that role. The problem was that, was that Brideshead Revisited came out at almost the same time. And that had a lot of guys in it. And guys and girls on television, I mean, no one was particularly interested in oh, the first woman member of parliament, but the sexual goings on in an English country house, who can, who can go against that? But it was, it was an extraordinary experience doing that. That was astounding. I loved playing other halves, and I thank Tom Finlayson, the producer, for seeking me out in England and um, asking me to do that. And because I had been trying to come back to New Zealand to work, and I could never make that work. I used to always come back to see my family, but somehow I couldn't make it work that I could stay here and work, and suddenly up came this film. I was working with a lot of island and Maori people. Tim Timuera Morrison's one of his first films. And um, so that was very exciting for me to work suddenly with that culture, which I had had no, no knowledge of when I was growing up, really, except I knew on the periphery that there was a Polynesian Maori culture in New Zealand, but you know, you, you didn't actually work with, with them. And John Lang did a wonderful job of the film. I think it's, it's a film I'm proud of. Um, and I was so happy working here. I had my little boy with me. He was one. And, um, and I went straight from that to Shake or Run. And um, those are two such extraordinary different experiences. Other House was much more fun to make than Shake or Run, although I did enjoy the cast stunts in Shake or Run. But, um, but Other House, I'm very proud of that film. I'd never done anything like a road movie before. And it was one of those things where an American script meant to be shot in Switzerland, couldn't be, had no money there, so it ended up in New Zealand and because of, there was a lot of fil money floating around then to make films. And so we were driving through the Alps and leaping off the car, ferry in the car. And when I think about it now, I mean, standing up on the back seat of a Trans Am with a helicopter overhead, no, stunt, no safety mechanism, hooking our car to the, a sky hook coming from Iroquois helicopter, thinking, I'm a mother, why am I doing this? But you just did. But uh, the stunt guy, Peter Best, was doing the... The stunts, I mean, it was brilliant. And I, we had a lot of fun. And we got to see New Zealand. It was amazing. We went all over the place. Cliff Robertson, I couldn't stand him. He was the most, the most obnoxious film star type you could imagine. He drove everyone crazy. He was so vain, so arrogant, so American, so, in, you know, in the, in the ugly sense of the word, so dismissive of the talent that he was surrounded by, of the way we do things in New Zealand. Such a, you know, he was a big Hollywood star. Oh, yes, really. But he expected that kind of treatment. And God, and on that film was the first time we, we ever had a cappuccino machine in the makeup truck. I was amazing. And they, they looked after us so well. We had such fun. But no, not him. He was forever in the dark corner calling his agent and moaning. He was very unpopular. But Leif was great, Leif Garrett. Um, he was a lot of fun. And, and the crew were great. And yeah, it was, it was terrific. Another true story about a writer with Bruno Ganz and Kerry Fox, another wonderful Kiwi girl. Um, and it, it was a true story, and it was beautifully told. Gillian Armstrong, what a great director she is. I really enjoyed playing that role. It's a heartbreaking story, and, and I just think that the attention to detail and, the, and, and Helen Garner, whose story it is, was there for two weeks rehearsal. I mean, wasn't it, what a luxury to rehearse in the, in the house that we mainly filmed in Shenu. And, uh, but Bruno wouldn't come to rehearsal, no. I don't do rehearsal, he said, fine. I don't do any more than three takes, fine, okay, right. But he's a great actor, so that's okay. But um, we just hung out, we were all girls together. It was an incredibly high number of females in the crew, which were great, which also worried Bruno. <laughs> it was funny. I had a great time doing that film, and then to end up in the last week doing a road trip out with um, Bill Fraser out into the desert. What a trip. It was beautiful. Yeah.
Why did I do it? Okay, so I was doing Portia and the Merchant of Venice with Patrick Stewart at the Royal Shakespeare Company and I get rung up and I go and do an audition and oh my God, um, they offer me a role but I have to meet the guy who's maybe going to be playing, and it's Sam Neill. And he'd just come over from Australia. So, oh my, well, that was that. And so within a week we were living together, bang, crash, wallop. What a ludicrous film. I mean, <laughs> I mean, did all these stunts and it's meant to be scary and you think, Scary? Really? Okay, fine. But it, I nearly drowned and I, it was... And I had to oh, kill, kill Sam and save the world from the Antichrist. It was, a, it was tricky. But what was really tricky was years later, my boy Tim, um, when, when he was at college, his friends all said, Oh, let's watch that film with your mum and dad. Now, I'd never let him see it for obvious reasons. There were one or two rather intimate scenes in that film. And um, he rang me. Absolutely hysterical. Mom, why didn't you tell me? And I said, darling, I never thought you'd ever see the film. But the first Omen film was great. I don't think ours measured up to that. But, you know, it launched Sam in a big way, which was terrific. We were filming the Russian liberation of Poland at the end of the Second World War while the Russian tanks were on the border to reinvade during the rise of Solidarity in 1986. What an extraordinary thing. We had Russian MiGs flying low over the, the city, and um, we certainly filmed in Auschwitz, we filmed in Rome, we filmed in the Sistine Chapel. I got to lie on the floor of the Sistine Chapel alone with all the lights up so you could really see it. The last time I'd been in there, I'd been there with hundreds of tourists all alone. I saw the Pope's private quarters. We met the Pope because I played his girlfriend when he was a student, and Sam was my brother. And we also had to have decoy uh, call sheets because the, 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 whoever they were who were monitoring us, who were listening in on all our conversations, used to, they didn't want a Western film crew there making a film about this subversive pope called John Paul II. So we were being monitored. So the, we'd, have, we'd say we're going there to film, but actually we'd go around there. So it was very cloak and dagger, very interesting. I actually love the people in the family. And um, I never imagined myself doing a television series, but what, an, what a privilege and a pleasure to do that. And I, I find that after all these years, because I'm 71 now, to come back and suddenly be you know, in, in everyone's houses and whatever time it goes on and being this feisty old grandmother, I've loved that. But uh, it's, um, it's, it, was, it was working faster than I've ever worked on television. And I'd never, I mean, things had changed a lot from when I was doing things like Nancy Astor. Sometimes it was film, sometimes it was video. This was all high speed digital film, and you can't hear a word people saying because everyone talks, everyone mumbles now. And I'm saying, excuse me, I'm going deaf. Could you speak up so I can hear you? But it's a great team. So I'm very happy to be doing some more of it. It's the classic thing. How many film roles are there for older women, A and B? The Maggie Smiths, the Judy Denches, the you know all those people, the Meryl Streeps. There's only such a, a, a few, and they get them all. So, am I going to go and bang down doors in Hollywood and say, "Hey, hey, I'm here. What about me?" No, I'm hoping that <laughs> my dream would be that someone in New Zealand wants to make a really interesting film about a feisty old lady who's got a lot to say about the world and life and survival and environmental issues and fun and living and cast me in the role. So that's my wish, but that hasn't happened yet. <laughs>